And back in the studio each week, Lisa comes with garden questions. Just what are your neighbors talking about? We try to wrap that up and present it. And so we can see, so the rest of the neighbors in that neighborhood can hear what's going on. And, and when grasshoppers hit, it's like they hit everywhere. When there's a blight, when something's in bloom, when butterflies, when birds are migrating, they're just not over your yard, they're everywhere. And so there's some value in sharing that. Welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Your gardens are beautiful. Yes, they are. They're looking really good. Your garden center is even more beautiful. <laughs> it is really pretty. So many of those summer blooming shrubs, the butterfly, the Rose of Sharon. Uh, we got some new roses in from Monrovia that are perfume roses. Oh my gosh, you got to come in just to smell. Them. Yeah, even if you're not into roses. Yeah. You have well, everyone is into roses. Not everyone wants to grow right. roses, but everyone loves the fragrance. Oh, yeah. Of roses, lilacs, the the intensity of crepe myrtles, the the beauty that solar yellow potentia, the, mm -hmm. the 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 way the butterflies and hummingbirds go after salvia gregii. It is a it's a botanical garden out there. It truly it looks is. beautiful. I love to walk through because you you walk in through and you're like, oh, what's that smell? What is that smell? And you start trying to hunt it down, or what's that color out there that's so bright? So definitely a fun place to grab your iced tea or your coffee and. Just walk through. Don't have to buy a thing. Just no. come in, bring your dog, and just enjoy the therapeutic effects of Waters Garden Center, a garden center, plants. So right. this questions. is about garden questions, though. Yeah, we, should, <laughs> we should go get into details. We should. So Dan has a question about his alligator junipers, and this is actually a question we've gotten in quite a bit. So I, I, I think it's happening overall through yeah. the Prescott area, or Quad City area. Um, he, so he has some large native old alligator junipers that are seem to be losing their inside foliage, yeah. kind of turning brown, dropping. Um, he definitely doesn't want to lose the trees. So he wants to know, should he be concerned? What should he do? What do you think? So Dan, uh, I, I'm not concerned. So I, I mean, this is the season when you get some leaf litter off of junipers. If it's a lot, okay, we need to we'll look at that. You might want to take a picture to bring it into the garden center just to make sure because it's on your radar. It's concerning. So your garden DNA is going, huh, something's off. So, but I'm not concerned in that. You didn't say the top was dead. I got dead branches. I've got sap oozing from the trunk. Those are all really bad. You don't want that. <laughs> Uh, so there's two kinds of junipers in this central highlands, this elevation. They kind of roam through, uh, pace in that area, come come up through the Verde, through uh, uh, Prescott, Prescott Valley, and then over towards Ashford, kind of towards Seligman. Lots and lots of uh, shaggy bark juniper and alligator juniper. So they're both the same. They're related. Alligator junipers, the bark looks like alligator skin. So it has this ragged, very texture, very, very uh, artistic mm -hmm. type of bark, big blue foliage. And then shaggy bark has this peeling kind of shaggy bark. The foliage looks exactly the same. The bark looks a little different. Both of them are shedding some foliage. I think there's a couple things that may be going on. One, they've been used to 20 years of drought and all of a sudden we are out of drought and they have been buried in water since October through the middle of, of May. So really they've had nonstop moisture. And so you've got some root damage. That's what I think is going on. And so the plant is trying to compensate and balance out its foliage. What to do? Uh, I would say fertilize. I know it seems weird to, to fertilize native plants, but a, a wild plant that you are caring for reacts very quickly, can recover very quickly. So I would fertilize it with the 744 all-purpose plant food. Dan, listen to me. It's important. I would also give it at the same time two products, the all-purpose food and Humic, H-U-M-I-C, Humic. It's humic acid. What humic acid does, it helps, well, it feeds the roots. So the roots want to root out deeper. It, it attracts more worms. It increases the, the mycorrhizal colonies underneath that, that tree. So the plant is healthier, better, stronger. So those are two things, just kind of no-brainers. I think what also could be going on is as conifers grow, that is evergreens that have needles, those are conifers, 
And they grow typically one time in the spring. So they're putting on a ring of, of new wood right now. They're elongating new tips, new growth right now. As they do that, as that new growth elongates on the outside edges of the foliage, it shades the inside of the tree. And so those, those, those needles that are more shaded drop. Also, as the wood elongates, the bark gets thicker, it pushes some needles off. And so to hear that needles are dropping on the inside of the tree does not concern me one bit. I think it's okay. But again, I don't want you to lose it. So, so bring a photo in. Let's take a close look to make sure. But just over an email or a comment, that's my first reaction. Pamper it a little bit. It'll make a big difference. And then I don't think, I think if you fertilize it, it would look like a brand new plant within three, four weeks. It'd look fantastic. So not to worry, Dan. So um, a lot of people thinking, oh, it's dry, it needs water. Oh, have been don't do that. Giving extra water. Don't do that. So I just want to make sure people understand, <laughs> don't give it extra water right now. It, yeah, they've had sufficient moisture. You might as well give your puppy dog arsenic. That's oh. about the same effect. <laughs> don't do that. So I don't, that they're bad. native. Well, you can kill, you can kill natives. So you kind of want to watch that one. So you do. Be uh, yeah, be careful. If you're in a water, you can do that just once a month. That's all a native plant needs. They don't want to be in your drip systems. One time a month is enough. And the ground has still got some moisture in it. I, I don't think they're going to need that. I think it's root damage. And then I think it's just, it's healthy. It's growing new foliage. It's shedding some of that old inside growth. Okay. Our next question is from Janie in Chino. She has a hillside on the back of her house that is very hot, full sun all day. It and makes... wind. It's Chino Valley. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a neighbor recommended that she use Mexican evening primrose. Yeah. Uh, she wanted to know your thoughts on that. And then if you had any other suggestions. Oh, Janie, this is great. <clears throat> I love it when women kind of call in and go, I want your opinion. <laughs> I <laughs> love that. Home, so <laughs> so uh, Primrose is going to do exceptionally well in Chino Valley. Actually, anywhere in the central highlands area, it's going to shine. So Primrose is a, it's a low growing, about ankle high plant, ground cover, spreads out, and it has these beautiful pink flowers, mm -hmm. kind of summer through autumn. And it's just covered with pink flowers nonstop. It can be rather aggressive. And so it tends to, you don't plant this where you, in the middle of a garden, it will choke out everything. You put it towards the outer edge where the water barely hits it. That, treat it with disrespect <laughs> and you can maybe keep it under control. So it's perfect for a hillside in Chino Valley. I think it'd be great. And it would spread and it would recede. Are there other choices? Many, 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 many choices. We got a right. hundred of them here. <laughs> Look at sedums. Yeah. Sedums and rock gardens kind of go together. These are low growing. They're kind of like <clears throat> cactus without the needles, the thorns. And so they just spread and creep in between the rocks. They hold the hillside yeah. down. They spread very easily. They love our sun. They're perennial, at least the, the ones we have are perennial. So they're going to come back year <clears throat> after year. What else is out there? Give me some uh, help, will you? Anything, junipers, petonia. Oh, sure. Oh, vines, yeah. Grasses. Uh, grasses. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it kind of depends on what you want that hillside to look like, and we can help you figure that out. So, Jeannie, you need to come into the garden center, and we'll give you the grand tour. So that's the secret. I would suggest, since hillside and Chino Valley, just knowing what I know out there, mm -hmm. those are bigger properties, typically. And so you'll be tempted to get a whole shopping cart full of things and just plant them in the hillside. You'd be better, a better design tip is get like odd numbers. So three, five, seven, group them together. Get another color, three, five, seven, group them together and go, go with pockets of color. It will look more natural that way on that hillside. Mm -hmm. We are out of time, Lisa, okay. just like that. So Ken Elisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, be right back after.